Hi, I'm John Safran at the Melbourne International Film Festival and you're watching City Surf. I'm just dropping in as patron. Look, it's great. The myths just expanded and expanded. I suppose the major difference is that, you know, a lot of the other bigger international festivals tend to be more marketplace driven. This is more a showcase festival for global and local cinema. Oh, well, I have to be biased and say the Eye of the Storm that this guy directed. We're playing here, opening world premiere here at MIF, and then we go off to the Toronto Film Festival with it. And I'm on the jury for the short films, so I've been watching the short films, which are, is amazing. You know, I just think, recommend that weekend where you just lock yourself away and watch all the short films. It's incredible, because from all over the world, like the most amazing, imaginative stuff, animations, drama. Uh, this is what, how I started going to festi film festivals. I think the mistake is to look through the program and see something you might be interested in. I think you should just pick a time. So I've got three hours here and just go and see something and, and risk it. You know, and then you'll see something you'd never otherwise see. It was a nightmare. It's too I get this kid job. Our world premiere is here at Melbourne International Film Festival. It's called I Am Eleven and it's about 11 year olds around the world. Well I definitely didn't do casting in the way lots of producers would. I, I actually met all the kids quite randomly and organically so I didn't um, want to go through schools or something like that. I wanted to just hit the streets and try and find people in really organic ways and I found wonderful children who feature in the film so we're really excited about premiering here. I've, I've always said to myself that don't grow up too fast, you know? I've already booked about four of them. I'm seeing the slap on the fourth, which is very exciting. Each episode is based on one character. My uh, character is episode eight. And, um, you know, it's about a little boy getting slapped. And uh, it's just about all the different ways how it affects people. Some people agree with it and some people don't agree with it. And I think my character gets a bit confused and he thinks it's his fault. I've got about 10 films booked. I'm seeing a film called Martha, Marcy, May, Marlene on Sunday night, which is about a girl who's escaped from a cult. I'm also seeing this amazing looking Iranian film called A Separation, which won uh, the jury prize at the Sydney Film Festival, uh, which is about a couple in Iran that want a divorce. My tip would be not to go too hard on seeing like tragic art house films, because in the past I've sort of seen a lot of depressing films in a row and I've realised my stamina is not up to it. So I would suggest balancing it out with some comedy, some docos, you know, mix it up a bit. That might seem obvious. But in 1964, this man, Ken Kesey, lit the fuse for the explosion of the 60s. Beats, Rhymes and Life, the Tribe Called Quest documentary, which unfortunately has sold out both nights. And somebody please give me tickets to Beats, Rhymes and Life. I guess seeking out maybe the weird and wonderful a little bit. Like yeah. Finisterra, a Catalonian uh, film about two Russian ghosts traversing the Catalonian landscapes, talking to trees with ears and uh, to reindeer. Usually I just randomly go to the documentaries because usually there is an element of curation where, they, where they, they really have, you know, they had lots of options and they chose these documentaries for this and that. And I find like a, an average documentary still has weird energy to it. So it's like, yeah, yeah so even, you know, I guess that's why people it's like... Re to be yours, yeah. yeah, it's basically reality TV, but, you know, on a bigger screen. Secret TV.